All right, guys, today I'm going to talk about when you should start applying for some interviews and how you can prepare better for them. But before we can get started with these guys, first, let me just tell you that I'm starting a new website called telmoacademy.com. This is where I will be releasing and putting all my new courses now. I'm moving away from telmosampaio.com into telmoacademy.com which I'm going to put the link in here on the description so you can see this new website. And also, let me just tell you that now I'm just starting my Patreon as well. So what I'm going to be doing in this Patreon, I will be releasing every month a new course that I will release on my website, telmoacademy.com. But for my Patreons, it will be only $10. Okay, so it's like... Uh, half of the price of what I usually put on my website, Telmo Academy. So if you want to get my courses for half of the price on, you can go to my Patreon, of course. All right, so let's carry on in here with our interviews, how you can prepare better for them and how you can perform better on them. So the first question I get a lot is, when should I start applying for some interviews? Now, let me tell you something in here, guys. Obviously, when you want to uh, apply for some interviews, you should have already some knowledge. You should have already some knowledge of some CSS, some knowledge of some JavaScript at least. And if you can, of course, learning a little bit of a JavaScript library like React, Angular or uh, Vue. But this is the thing that most of the people, they don't understand. You don't need to have an extensive knowledge, okay? I'm going to tell you that if you know the basics of HTML and CSS, if you know how to build a simple website, if you know the basics of JavaScript, like how to create a function, some variables, what are the different data types, like what is a string, what is a number, and so on, I would say that most of the companies, okay, not all of them, but most of the companies, they will hire not based on your current level, but based on your personality and on your attitude. So what do I mean with this? This actually happens in, in my current job. If you guys don't know, I'm an instructor at a um, coding bootcamp. So I'm teaching other developers, other persons that they are learning how to code to become web developers and then they are hired by companies. These companies and, and the majority of companies, I've talked with so many different companies and with so many different managers and everyone comes to the same con conclusion, which is when you are, when a company is hiring a junior developer, obviously they want you to know a little bit of code, of course, because they, you, you will have to do some job in there, but they are more interested in your personality. They are more interested on who you are. Are you someone that when you face a problem, a new problem, are you someone who is just going to cross the arms or are you someone who is going to try to do as best as they can to actually, um, to actually try to solve the problem? So in a lot of interviews, there is these kind of questions that the, the companies they will ask. I think I even talked about these one time, but this actually happened to me one time. I went to an interview and they asked me like this. How many balloons can I can I have in here inside of this room? Or what's what's the, the length from here, from Earth until the moon? What's the distance? They ask you these kind of questions just to see how you react. OK, uh, so there is no no right answer in here. They want to see how you will be handled to uh, how you how you will be able to handle these kind of situations that you don't know what to do because this will happen on your day-to-day -day life in a company someone is going to throw a problem at you you don't have any idea what are you going to just say oh i have no idea i don't know what to do and you're going to cross your arms no what you need to do let, let me let me just give you an, an example of what i said like in my interview, I remember that I said something like, look, based on the area of this um, room, I can try and calculate roughly the, um, for example, the volume, the volume of this room could be, you know, I, I was trying to calculate it, like on the top of my head, I was just trying to explain him. Okay, so imagine, I, I'm just gonna give you an example. This is gonna be 
um, 3,000 meters cubic, the, the volume of this room. And maybe one balloon is going to be one meter cubic. So maybe I can have in here, um, I don't know how much that said, I said 3,000 meters cubic, I don't remember now. But if I can have one meter cubic per balloon, it will be 3,000 balloons. Just, uh, and I said, of course, this can, can be a result that is not accurate, but if you give me some more time, I will go and I do some research about it and I will come back to you with some uh, good result. That's it. Even though I didn't give them a correct answer, I, I show them my process of thought of how I would think about solving this problem. And even though it not, might not be correct, they see, okay, he's actually thinking on a solution to come up with this problem. So <laughs> this is what I'm trying to tell you guys is that there is no way that you can be fully prepared for an interview. There is no way, okay? So what I want to tell you with this is that whenever you know these basics of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and if you know a bit of React, even better, just start applying for these companies. Go to the interviews, go to the interviews, and then you will see based on what they ask you in there, Maybe there will be even things that they will mention you on the interview that you have no idea and you're going to be like, wow, mm, maybe I should know this. So when you go back home, you will learn and you will become better. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. Even the first time that you will go for an interview, you will be most likely, I'm not sure who you are, but most likely you will be very nervous because it's normal, it's, it's a human nature. You are going to go to an interview, other people, they are evaluating you uh, and you are going there to try to get a job, you will be nervous. So the more interviews that you are going, you will feel much more confident, you will feel much more relaxed to give some good and accurate answers. So all of this takes practice. So don't be all the time like, oh, I'm not ready to start applying for interviews or whatever. Just go, just go and try your best. Not what? You are not going to lose anything. You are not going to lose anything because you don't have the job. So you are not coming out of there losing something because there is something that you never had. You never had the job. So you will just try your best. So how can you actually try to prepare better for these kind of interviews. One of the things that I would really recommend is when you go to the interviews, apart from your technical knowledge, of course, try to do some research about the company itself because companies, they love when people talk about them. Do research on what kind of sector are they working on, have a look if they have any prizes, have a look if they are working on some new great projects that they are putting on their LinkedIn or, or on their website or even came out in the news. Who knows? Do a research on that and surprise them because they will ask you at some point, uh, do you know something about this? And this is where you can actually surprise them by telling them all these details, showing them actually that you want to work for them. This is something super, super important that I'm trying to tell you because the companies, they want to hire uh, people that they want to work for them and they, they are showing this attitude of actually trying to know something, uh, trying to solve problems. is not about your actual knowledge that you know right now. Obviously, the more that you know, the better. I'm talking about, of course, for these situations of junior developers. But that's it, guys. This is what I wanted to tell you in here about these kind of interviews. I would like you guys to really just try to practice as much as you can uh, at home. Go to the interviews because most likely the first one that you will have, um, you will be very nervous. It, it's normal. So the more interviews that you go, the more you will feel comfortable. And then, of course, there is one more thing that I would like to mention in here, which is you should try when you are starting your journey to, to become a web developer or software developer, I would advise you, of course, to start with the online presence. This kind of online, online presence could be either with a blog, it could be with a YouTube channel, it could be with an Instagram account, anything. Use social media to tell other people what you are working on 
uh, it could be with GitHub, for example. When you are just pushing your code to GitHub and sharing your code with other people, this is actually another way to show what are you working on. Uh, and even on GitHub, if you guys have noticed, there is this kind of dots every day that you can see how many way, how many times you have been pushing code, how many times you have been working on projects. This is actually a great, a great way of showing that you are actually committed and learning all the time. So this thing that I was talking about now is that when I started my YouTube channel, for example, look, I can't even speak English perfectly because I'm not a, 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 an English native speaker. I'm from Portugal. I started my YouTube channel with a lot of challenges. I didn't know how to shoot a video. I was not comfortable in the presence of the camera. Um, and all of this takes time, of course, for you to get better. But what I wanted to say with this is that when I started to put some tutorials online of things doing it by myself, trying to teach other people, when I was using my YouTube channel on my CV, I was putting in there like as an extra resource for the things that I knew, when I was going to these companies, they were not even asking me to do any challenge because most nowadays, most of the companies, they ask the, the candidates to do a challenge because they need to know if you actually have a little bit of knowledge or not. When they were seeing my tutorials, all the things that I know, they say, okay, this guy knows what he is doing, of course. So <laughs> this is something that you could do on yourself. Just, just think about it. Imagine that you are going to apply for a position uh, to work as a React developer. What would you prefer? To be at home, creating some tutorials on your own time, by yourself, not stressed at all, teaching other people, and showing the world that you actually know this, or would it be better for you to go to an interview and they are asking you like super difficult questions in there. <laughs> if, if Imagine if they would ask me something that I didn't know in, a, in an interview, I would say, look, I already know this. Probably I even done a video about it. And I could say, look, maybe I'm just a little bit nervous now because I'm in here and under pressure in this interview and I can't even um, come up with the idea, but I'm sure that I know this. This could be one good excuse, for example. But one thing that I also want to mention before I finish this video that is getting a little bit long is that there is a lot of companies out there that they are putting super difficult challenges. Let's say, uh, oh, I want you to create a new website with React. I want you to connect it with Node.js. Uh, no, they will give you a super difficult challenge. And then, when you go into the actual job, they will ask you, oh, can you go and go, can you go to this website and change the background color of this div? Or can you just change the text inside of that uh, button? This actually happened to me. There are a lot of companies that this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I've seen so many people sharing this same example that you go to an interview, and then they ask you super difficult uh, questions, some difficult challenges. And then when you go into the job itself, you are doing a job that uh, even a junior developer can do it. <laughs> this actually happened to me before. And I guess that happened with many people. So these kind of jobs, try to stay away from them because you will not learn. You will not progress as a web developer. You will not learn anything. But yeah, guys, this was the video that I wanted to talk about today about these interviews. Um, I just want to do a quick resume about these is that apply for interviews as soon as you can. Try to do some research on the companies and uh, that's it. The more that you practice, the more that you will get better and you will get a job, a job as soon as possible. I'm sure about that. All right, guys, thank you so much for all of you that you watch this video. Don't forget to check my new website, telmoacademy.com, which I just released. I'm moving all my new courses in there. If you want to support me on my Patreon, make sure that you check the link on the description. So I'm going to release my courses first on Patreon for my patrons for a very, very reduced price. And then I will put them on my website for a bigger price, of course. That's it for this video, guys. 
Thank you so much for watching this and I'll see you in the next video.